Last year, a lot of the wood we had delivered came out pre-cut, and we ended up getting a bunch of our wood that was really bad, bad quality. You know, it just came dirty. Um, some of it seemed like it had been sitting outside a long time. It was really wet, and we paid a lot. Uh, I think we paid, you know, $250, $300 a cord. Out here is um, kind of standard. Um, this year, and towards the end of last year, we actually found somebody who has a pretty good uh, hustle going on. He works with um, contractors, uh, land clearing folks, developers who are cutting down trees, and he goes and they pay him to take away the wood, the cordage, cordwood. He bucks it up, puts it in his back of his trailer. He's got a dump trailer on the back of the F-450, and he brings it around and he charges people to deliver the rounds, like these rounds you see behind me. So he gets paid on both ends. It's a pretty sweet deal. Um, but we get a really good price. Um, last year I had two cords of cedar delivered. It was a little bit rotten. So he gave me two cords for $40. Um, it's cedar. It burns fast. It's not very good wood. But you know, a lot of people burn soft wood and it, it works pretty well. Um, this year I got two cords of this Doug fir um, for 100 bucks, And I'd have to split it myself. Um, but I enjoy the work and kind of warms you twice, right? So I've got a bunch of this stacked up behind me and I've got a, a few cords this year. I think we're up to probably five or six cords. We usually go through um, three a year. So we're getting ahead. I'd like to be, you know, at least a, a couple years ahead, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, because these rounds are, some of these ones are so big, um, it could take a little while to, to get into them. Um, but what I find is if I use, I got the big maul here, it's an eight pound maul. It's nothing fancy, it's just a Collins axe with a fiberglass handle. as a Father's Day present. As well as, I've got the, the Fiskars X27, um, which seen a lot of use. I've got a, a splitting wedge. It's not too big of one, I forget how much this guy weighs, but you know, yay, lay large, and that, that seems to work pretty well. And then the, the grenade, which I'm not as big of a fan of, actually. Uh, but between those four tools, I can get through some of these bigger rounds pretty easily. Um, it doesn't seem to be so bad. Makes good wood, and wood, and it you know, burns nice and hot. So. Got my dog, this new ball. First time he's been playing with it. Split it right open. Glows in the dark. That was the idea. You weren't supposed to chew it to pieces, though.
So again, this is nothing fancy, but works pretty well for me. And you can see I've done quite a bit so far, and I have a bit to go. It's a lot of fun. Enjoy it. It's a whole lot better than paying an electric bill every winter. That's for sure. Got a couple of strategies for covering it. Down here, we're using some old roofing we had lying around. Actually, oh, look at that guy. Fuzzy bear caterpillar. I just attached this to some of this crating that I have that my roofing came on. Came on these crates right here. And I put another piece of the crate on top and drape the tarp over. When you put a tarp over firewood, you don't want to cover it to the ground because it needs to breathe. Or you'll end up with mold issues. My neighbor actually showed me that one. It's a little uh, inadvertent wood chopping art for you. I like when that happens. I'll stay together like that. Makes me happy. One thing you, uh, firewood snobs can <coughs> never compete with is the ease of splitting softwood. All right, there will be about three nights of, not two, maybe three nights of wood. Do that with chestnut or maple or oak or hickory or ash. Well, just wanted to show how I do it real quick. Get it split up and stacked. This wood won't be for this year and a lot of it's pretty wet, but I got plenty of wood for next year. So this is more just a little exercise and get it up before the rains really come. 